Hi everyone, my name is Anthony James Hayes. You probably know me from Best from Brothers to Searching, and I'm so honored today that you meet me here. I want to talk about a little bit about my book. The first one I wrote was Journey of the Christians from Dead Works to Living Faith, my very first book. It's about the story about me pretty much going through things and how I overcome by the Word of God. And here is The New Kingdom with Liberty Man and Evil Stone. That's my second best book so far. And I want to take a little time to tell you about my second book mostly. The first one is about some children. They go to like an adventure. They go to see a new kingdom. The future, I guess you can say, of God and how he's going to restore the kingdom to Garden of Eden conditions. And they fight good and evil and light and darkness. So I encourage you to actually get these books. They're available on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. And then my second story, Liberty Man, a man who fights for freedom. And he takes off the chains of tyranny, of the kings of tyranny, off of him. So he finally gets free, and I hope you find out his journey and how he got free and so on. And then my third book, The Evil Stone, a man who actually turned to the devil, or he sold his soul to the devil for a powerful magic stone. And he had the promise of ruling the world. So I hope you enjoy these books. They're available. And they're family friendly and they're something you can learn with the Word of God. They're parables that you can teach your children and your grandchildren about. So I encourage you today to go to these places and I hope you bless and you enjoy these books. Thank you. Cheers and good on you. Why aren't you listening to Brothers Just Searching? Why? You're about to embark on a journey through the written word of God on subjects that deal with the day. This is Brothers Just Searching. How you doing, everyone? Welcome to this episode of Brothers Just Searching, where we talk about God's word and current world events to educate and to edify believers of Jesus Christ. I'm Isaac, along with Aubrey, Boogie, Hello. and uh, Bowen. Bowen. <laughs> Bowen, you, you, boy, you chugging that down, huh? Cool. Got it all. He like he's a fish. Yeah, look, you got to bend the, the bottle. Make sure you got every... Uh, yeah. Bowen, not on Yeah, there, he's got man. it all. Uh, <laughs> now, how you doing, guys? Oh. Uh. Well, <laughs> we definitely Cajun. Yes, 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 yes. We we have we we're still barbarian Cajuns. Uh, ah, yeah. barbarian Cajuns eating them mud bugs. Hey, yeah. I had a guy. I had a guy on the last episode of the Cajun Conservative, uh-huh. and he he's from Missouri. You know what he calls our our uh, our crawfish? What? Uh, crawdads. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah he yeah, said yeah. he said when I was young in Missouri, he said I. He said, I used to go in the creek and catch some crawl dads. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> <laughs> but he never ate them, though. Well, I don't know. I didn't talk to him about that much. Mm. He did say he came from Louisiana, though. He did come to Louisiana. But it looks like a crawl dad right now. <laughs> uh, he looked like something. I don't know about a crawl dad. <laughs> <laughs> Alien, maybe? Bowen, how was Saturday, man? We had our cook-off. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed Saturday. Oh, yeah. It was fun. We didn't win, though. Hey, how we do you know? Win. Yeah, but you see, that, that that's what really got me upset. They ate all my food, and I didn't get nothing for it. <laughs> that's why it's called a competition, boy. My goodness. Hey, ne- hey. next time, ne- <laughs> next time, I'll go to that. You know what I'm going to cook? Corn and rice. Corn. <laughs> and you, you, you might, might win. win. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have win. You're not getting my vote for corn and rice. <laughs> you said you were doing a chili cook-off next time? Yeah, is that we, what you're we, planning we, That's what we're planning on. The dates haven't been set enough. Because, yeah. man, we got family conference that's mm. coming up, too, and I'm preaching at that. So, uh, you're preaching where? At family conference. And uh, not no, not not Jimmy Swagger's family conference. Boy's eyes is like whoa. He's like really. Like, really? like he was about to worship you. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Boy's like, boy's like, oh. my boy, you thought I was going? In? I, 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 I was fixing to dive under the table. Uh, hey, boy, like, you got to realize though, man, we're we're preaching all over the world already, so it wouldn't be nothing to, to go in front of a camera. You know, we got three of them here. So. Me, me, and uh, Denny and Daniel were talking about something at the church the other day. We got miracles going on with discipleship. <laughs> Uh huh. And uh, just say, I just wanted to mention that miracles are happening here. Yeah, yeah. Because we're doing discipleship. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's right. The same yeah. way you would see miracles at other places, mm-hmm. you see miracles happening here. Well, let, let's go All back right. to the miracle that we got the other day with that email about Nepal. I, I never mm. would have thought that yeah. that country we would have been been being ranked. listened to. We're ra- yeah, we're ranked in the top one hundred. Mm-hmm. You know now. I, I, mm. You know, with the Cajun conservative, we got that with uh, with politics, but 
you know, hey, it just takes a matter of time, though. I believe one day we're going to be the we're going to be the best. <laughs> Christian podcast out there, and then we're gonna go over there. We're gonna be like Alex Jones. Uh, with uh, that. Uh, no, no, uh, don't don't compare us to Alex. Jones. They're gonna tell y'all. They're gonna tell y'all. Get rid of that idiot bone. So, so here's the thing. Maybe not the best, like overall, but yeah. ba- best in our class. Yeah, yeah. But we gotta figure out the, where yeah. our audience is. Hey, hey, we're gonna go over there one day, and they're all gonna run the bow and. Yeah, boy, they're gonna run to you. I don't know about like that, but <laughs> what you doing? They, you they're gonna want your faces all over the merchandise. Oh, hey, hey, guys, we cannot get Bowen coffee no more. That sugar's coming through. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead. Let's start. Yes. <laughs> all right. I, 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 I think that was hey, Bowen's hey, threat. That was just uh, <laughs> the, the wires just crossed in there. Yeah, it was, it was disconnected. <laughs> I think it disconnected up here. Right. You got that right. So Bowen, so on, before we start, you're gonna join that that cook off though. That chili cook off, make a mean chili. Oh yeah, buddy. Oh yeah. You better uh, believe it. I tell you it. what, they'd be spitting fire when they eat my chili. We want to win, Bowen. <laughs> they're gonna be spitting fire. They're gonna say, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're gonna drink twenty-two bottles of water like hey, that. Hey, so hey, it's hey, gotta on, be. Lloyd, LB, write a note. We need that. We need to sell more bottles of water next time. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's gonna be like three dudes when I got I was drinking the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know how to cook a chili. Yeah. Oh, charge, oh, charge a dollar seventy-five for a bottle. And hey, I tell you. What? I tell you what, you know what I'm gonna do? They they ate all my fish over there. So what I'm gonna do when I cook that chili, they're gonna pay me five dollars a bowl. <laughs> we already charge an eight to get in. <laughs> hey no, I would say this though. We Better make a, big, a lot of bowls. We're gonna have to make a bigger pot then next time. Yep. Now look, oh, hey, hey, you, you know gonna bring that, out hey, the other one. Hey, you know what Lawrence told me? He asked me, he said, You know how to make a chili? I said, man, yeah. He said, I don't know how. He said, me and you going to be partners. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might we might just be able to put our, our whole team together. Good man, we had yeah, two teams. Yeah. We had the Cajun Conservative yeah, and yeah, Brother just searching. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah. just all season it. <laughs> we would like the three students when they put, oh, it needs yeast. <laughs> <laughs> a little this, a little that. Yeah. Put some yeast in and see the red start rising. Cool, oh, man. It's anyway, so anyway. Anyway. So let's go ahead and start off. We are starting off our new series tonight. And... Look, guys, uh, before before we even started Brothers Just Searching, when we were thinking about doing this show, Boogie, I don't know if you remember, but we brought mm-hmm. out this topic. Boy, we got we to talk about Law and Grace. Yeah, yeah. We got to talk about Law and Grace. And uh-huh. we always said we need to talk about Law and Grace, but and, and we I know it's the Lord. The Lord has everything in his timing. Mm-hmm. But we always said, well, we're going to talk about law and grace, and we never got to it. There was always mm. a, a crisis come up or something would happen, and we couldn't talk about it. And the last time we did a series, which was a phenomenal series, it was the series of the Book of Revelations, the State of the Church. And when we started talking about this series, Bo, when you brought it up, you were like, man, we need to do Romans 6, 7, and 8. Mm-hmm. And the title came to me right when Bowen said that the struggle between law Law and grace grace. because Mm. there's a lot of christians out there you have some christians that believe well we're on the grace we're safe we can sin whenever we want and then there's some christians out there that says hold on we do have grace but we have to follow god's law and we have to live under the law and uh grace right (laughs) <laughs> LB said Lauren Larson's here because <laughs> of the topic. <laughs> I wish we should ask Brother Larson to yeah, come one night. Oh, Lord. But, um, but anyway, so so this uh, but this topic is 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 very known and is very diverse. It mm. is uh, it is the it has divided churches. It has mm. it has brought division amongst the brethren, and we want to bring out. We just we're gonna study the scriptures. We're gonna go through these scriptures, and we're gonna. Do what we can to explain them the best we can. As you can tell, we all have some type of book here, mm. uh, Bible, commentary, uh, some notes. And um, I think this is going to be a good a good topic. The first mm. episode, we're going to title this series called Dead to Sin, Alive to Jesus. And mm. some Bibles will say alive to God. Mm-hmm. But this really encouraged me when I started studying this last night. And, I, and we're going to talk about this um, this great topic of the struggle between mm. law and grace. And this mm. episode mm. titled Dead to Sin Alive to to Jesus. Uh, so as we always do, we're going to ask Aubrey to read the word. We're going to be reading from the King James Bible. Mm. And uh, we do have other uh, translations on the table, but we're going to go ahead and mm. uh, do our reading from the King James Version. 
Take it away, Roxella. You're doing a great job, son. <laughs> hey, right. He didn't even say thank, anything. <laughs> thank, thank you guys for the great intro. I'm really excited to get into God's Word. Yes, sir. It's, uh, it's where all of our insight comes from. That's so, right. Let's go. No longer slaves to sin. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that we are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead in Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lived, he lived unto God. Likewise, reckon ye you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Hallelujah. Amen. Some good, yeah, go, some, go on. Some, go. Some, That's some so good. good. That's some oh, good yeah. scripture That's right some there. good news. Oh, yeah. That's some good news. So let's go back to the... Uh, to the first cha- uh, the first verse, uh, what shall I say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? If you if you look at some uh, some scriptures, a lot of people believe the reason one one reason Paul wrote the book of Romans, it was because it was getting around that Paul was saying that Christians could live in grace. And that they could go ahead and mm. sin whenever they want. They were basically saying Paul was giving Christians a license to sin. So when Paul wrote the book of Romans, he wanted to make this point clear. How do we, how we know this? Well, we have to go back to Romans chapter 5, verse 20. Paul wrote, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abound, grace did much more abound, that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So what Paul was basically saying is that, look, you lived under law, and the law represented, you know, it represented a bondage. It represented something that you could not overcome yourself. But Paul said, look, because of grace... Mm-hmm. Sin didn't abound there no more. It was grace where sin abound, grace more uh, did more abound. What you're saying is, uh, Paul said it that the law was our schoolmaster. Mm-hmm. It was it showed us what sin was. Mm-hmm. And when Paul brought this out, he said, "Look, because you know what sin is, you don't have to live in that sin, or you don't have to try to abide by God's law to not sin. Grace abounds." So that's when Paul goes into verse six when he says. What shall I say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So what Paul's saying right here, listen, what you heard of me saying, hey, you have a license to sin, Mm. it's not there. Mm. It's not there. It's not there because it was a misunderstanding. It it was something that people thought, well, Paul's saying this, that means we could sin any while. And this is, I think this is a great point to start off with. Let's talk about grace. Mm-hmm. Grace is there for, for us not to walk in sin. It helps us to live our life as long as we look to the cross of Christ. Right. But if a Christian comes out and says, well, I have grace because Paul preached grace. Mm-hmm. I have a license to sin. Mm-hmm. They maybe can quote Romans chapter 20, 
to back the 520 to back them up. But Paul, Paul, Paul don't correct himself. Paul clarifies himself or he clears mm. it up going into verse six, saying that we we not going to we should we continue sin that grace abound. And he says, God forbid, if you look at the ESV, the ESV says by no means. Uh, there is another saying I'm trying to find. I think it's in that one book in the notes where it's like it's uh, it, 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 he was surprised in the Greek mm-hmm. word where he, he he's like, wait, you telling me a Christian by no means. That's it. Yeah, yeah. By no. Well, no. Means. In the commentary part, six one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, six, I, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, the question opposing the Jewish, uh, yeah, it says continue in sin. Yeah, and and that's that's where he was, you know, he yeah. was saying Paul mm-hmm. was Paul was basically saying, wow. look, he yeah. was surprised that a Christian uh-huh. would say, oh, well, I got grace, so I'm going to go back to the filthy lifestyle mm-hmm. that I came out of. And mm-hmm. I, I want to go ahead and get that part. Let's let's start with these two verses because I think we can really dive into these two verses mm-hmm. right here. I hope we get mm-hmm. through all the the, uh, right. the parts we read. We have to continue next week. It's fine. I really want to take our time with this, guys, because this is a big subject. But but let's go ahead like this. I want to bring this in. By what Paul's saying, can a Christian sin all he wants? Mm. Or as he said, God forbid. I think it's a surprise. Mm. Yeah, we do live in grace, but that don't give us a license to sin. Right, mm. right. Well, this is the thing people got to realize, you know, when a Christian does that, when a Christian says, you know, I can do whatever I want, I'm under grace, what they're doing to themselves and what they're doing to others, they're slaving themselves and they're slaving others. You know, I was, I, was, I, I won't mention the lady's name, but there was a lady I was, I heard she was, uh, she was supposed to be Christian and she was telling another person who was having a hard time, you know, with drinking problems. And she's like, oh, you can drink, honey. It's okay. Those other Christians are saying you can't drink. They're, 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 they're uh, what's the word I want to say? They're legalistic. They don't, you know, it's nothing wrong drinking a, few, a beer or a few here and there. And I'm thinking to myself when I heard that, when I, I heard that individual say what the other a person told her, I was thinking, wow, she's just dating that person more into bondage. So we have to be careful when we do things like that. Like I said, we're not hurting ourselves only, but we're hurting others. And, you know, God's grace is is great. But it, like it says, it's never a license to sin or to do what I want, you know. And, and don't get me like, for example, there are some things that we have. Like we have, we eat, we eat food, we, we do things. That's our nature. You know, like, for example, we, we get married or we have relationships with people. That God designed those things, but those things are not to control us. You know, God designed them. They're wonderful, but they were never. God had no desire or attentions for it to control us or control our lives, you know. Yeah. So I have a sort of analogy to, uh, to try to put forth. Bear with me as I piece it together. So... We can either be a drain pipe or a copper wire. Mm, so mm, we mm-hmm. can either be something for sewage to pass through or we can be something for electricity to pass through. And you can't be both. You can be one or the other. Mm, so mm. if you're going to be a drainage pipe, you can't have electricity flow through you. But if you're going to be copper... Mm. You can't have sewage flow through mm. you. Wow. So that's the analogy I came up with yeah. in thinking that if we're going to say that we are dead to sin, it'd be like being the copper. Right. The sewage isn't going to pass through it. Right. It's not because it's not made to receive that. Right. Because it, it's not a drainage pipe. Wow. Does that make sense to you no, guys? Well, it yeah, does because yeah. I got a question. Who are you connected to? Are you connected to the uh, the sewage system or are you connected to the uh, to the electric uh, to the electrical grid? And, and see, that's where, you know, I, I like uh, brother, uh, Tony Evans. I like Brother Swagger's commentaries. And I like how they brought, the, mm-hmm. brought our identity in Christ. Mm-hmm. Who do you identify with? Because listen to the last part of that verse where it says, How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So what, 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 Paul is saying is, look, you you died to your sin. You you went ahead and you accepted Christ. You you're living under Christ. How why you want to return to something that has been dead? You know, why why are you going to go ahead and go back to something when you are alive in Christ? Look at your identity. 
Mm-hmm. When you come to Christ, that old self died. I think it's uh, Bowen. Help me out. Isn't it Second Corinthians? Uh, I think it's five seventeen where it says, "If any man be in Christ, he's, he's a, a new, new creature. creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things are become new." I think it is either first or second Corinthians. It's in one of the Corinthians. Mm. But we have a new identity. We are a new person. So how can a Christian that says, "Wow, I I am I am I'm, I am saved. I'm filled with the Spirit. I love the Lord." But I want to go ahead and honky tonking all night. I mm-hmm. want to go ahead and mess around with every woman that passed me by. I want to go ahead. Mm-hmm. You, that's that's your old self. That's your mm-hmm. sin nature. That's mm-hmm. things that God forbids in His Word. Because in the Scripture, me and Dad was talking about that this morning, and He quoted that Scripture where He says, uh, "There shall be no drunkard shall enter the kingdom of heaven. No adulterers. No no fornicator. No." All this stuff. So how can we as believers, we have a new identity in Jesus and want to still go ahead and sin? I don't see it's possible. It's it's not possible. That's why Christ gave us the power. And we're going to read it later on to overcome sin. Mm -hmm. So, Bowen, before we move on, I want to ask you, do you have anything you want to say on this? These two scriptures? Be sure, boy. Come on, boy. Come on. Prime uh-huh. the palm. Prime the palm. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead. If everybody else got anything else. Go ahead. Uh-huh. So we're going to go ahead to verse number three and four, where it says, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Christ, Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Remember that statement, because I want to bring that back. We're bapt- we were, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into his death, that like as Christ was risen up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we also walk in newness of life. Now, where did Paul, man, I brought this out. Paul said in verse 2 that we are dead to sin and live in, uh, we live any longer therein. He asks the question. He brought it to the identity of the source. Mm. We're dead to that. Then he brings it back to our identity in Christ. Know ye not that so many of us were mm. baptized into Jesus Christ? He brought back to mm. the identity. Mm-hmm. Who oh, who were yeah. we baptized in? Now look, I, I know a lot of my my friends that are uh, UN, uh, UPC mm-hmm. and the Holiness uh, Pentecostals. A lot of them believe in baptism. Well, you have to be baptized to get saved. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What did Paul say right here? Paul did not say anything about being baptized into water. No, he said baptized into Christ. Jesus Christ. And it's, they they might make the argument. Well, that's in Jesus' name. We got to go look at the word baptism. Baptism really means to be in morse or it means to Emerge. be emerged into mm-hmm. some or to emerge into something that's what he was telling us look you have to be you, when you're baptized into Christ you you take in Christ you are observe you um uh help me with the word guys uh, integrate integrate you yeah. can say you you're mm-hmm. immersed into Christ merge. So, emerge you that you are in Christ Jesus and mm-hmm. because of his death Christ, God looks at us mm. as we died, mm. as Christ died. Now, we're not talking about the sacrificial part of salvation, but no. saying because we're in Christ, he sees his mm. death, he sees his burial, and he sees his resurrection. Yeah, it points he, to the cross. It points to the, the cross death. of Calvary, mm-hmm. and that is yeah. our identity is in Christ. And he says you were baptized into his death, meaning we died to sin. Why did Christ come to earth? Because he died for the mm-hmm. sins of the world. Later mm-hmm. on in the scripture, he says it only happened once and it's only going to happen once. Well, it's just like in the Old Testament. It pointed to Christ. You know, when Abraham sacrificed Isaac and or the lamb, well, he didn't sacrifice Isaac, but, but God stopped him. But all these things in the Old Testament, they was to point us to Jesus, right, what right. was to come. So this is what this is right here. It's just to point you, it's, it's to point to the Christian to show that, hey, this is the symbolism right here. Well, Paul was yeah. saying your identity, you made new. If mm-hmm. you're made new, you're not going to want to sin because you right. died to that because of Christ's death and our symbolism of baptism, even outwardly of the physical uh, the physical part of baptism. When you are baptized mm-hmm. in front of a congregation, I know y'all having one. We've had mm-hmm. one a few mm-hmm. times so far mm-hmm. this year. That is showing the world that I died to myself mm-hmm. and I'm risen in the newness of life with Christ. Right. Because of when we said, Lord, forgive us of our sin and we met it with our heart, we are truly saved. We mm-hmm. have died to sin. We don't long to sin. We don't want to sin no more. Mm-hmm. And that's because, we, and you can go with the, the sin nature is dormant and, we, and all that good stuff. But when we were baptized, we were we were baptized into his death, meaning that we could, when he died, he died to sin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And sin couldn't hold him no more because that's where it goes to the verse 7. Therefore, if we are buried with him by baptism into death, meaning that we die to ourselves, 
that like as Christ was risen up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life, saying, look, we died to that. We shouldn't want to sin. We shouldn't crave sin. We shouldn't We shouldn't even entertain the thought of sin. Mm-hmm. We should walk in the newness of life. Well, we were talking in prep, and Aubrey, you brought mm-hmm. that out, where, you know, you, you when you wake up, you have a newness. You want to walk in the fellowship of God. And I mm-hmm. said, yeah, you're not walking around saying, Lord, well, how can I sin today? And you have people. I, I love certain people in our, our, our circle of friends and all, but there's some of them, they wake up and they ask them, where the first alcohol beverages or where's the first thing i could watch to go ahead and get pleasure myself well Mm -hmm. you're trying to please yourself you're not looking Mm -hmm. to the one Mm -hmm. but if you're walking in the newness of life which is in jesus Mm -hmm. christ our lord guess what you don't want to sin because you're Mm -hmm. living in the newness of christ that he put into your heart and anytime a person Mm -hmm. worldly or christian or claim to be christian anybody who says i am pleasing the flesh today or "It's, it's all about pleasure it's all about me. It's all about how much things can make me happy. It actually controls you. It, it, you're a slave to it when you know, because mostly I, I, I know yeah, it's like a lot and of work. You're alive to it. Yeah. It, yeah. You move to it. Yeah. It, you're, you're a slave to it. You're, you're, you're bound, you bondage to it. And, you know, it's like chains being put around you, kind of speaking. And, and, you know, mostly worldly people, Christian Christians too, and mostly worldly, you can tell it's all about them. It's how much pleasure I can get. And that's all they're focused on. They're, that's their 100%. That's their ambition in life is just, I just want to have fun. I just want to please myself. And by them doing that, they're a slave to that. And they miss the path that mm-hmm. allows them to be uh, identified with Christ. Right. And right. to be uh, baptized into his death. Right, exactly. Well, yeah. listen to how he says in verse uh-huh. 5, For if you have been planted together in the likeness of his death, mm-hmm. we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. And you know that, Aubrey, you and the book as mm-hmm. uh, as pla- as uh, landscapers, mm-hmm. when you plant a tree, that grew starts to grow mm-hmm. and it starts mm-hmm. to give newness of life. Spreads, so yeah. if we've been planted together like him, like when we was in his death, and when we rose, like when we spiritually rose again, mm-hmm. we're not, we're gonna be like Christ. Christ, wow. Christ hates sin. If you think about it, Christ mm-hmm. hates sin. He does not want to have sin anywhere near his presence. How much more as believers we should hate sin that much? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you think about it, and it's just it just it, you you can't you can't you can't fathom that people. Some Christians say we have a license to sin when Paul clearly states in just these first five short verses mm-hmm. that we are in Christ. He brought it back to the source, the identity, Jesus Christ, and Him crucified because of Christ in His His death, mm-hmm. His burial, and His resurrection. Mm-hmm. We are not supposed to crave sin or look towards sin mm-hmm. for, for pleasure. You know, if the old man is dead, like, for example, if a man, you know, he used to have trouble with pornography, for example. But at one time it would control him. But when he's dead, spiritually speak, I mean, you know, so yeah, spiritually speaking, he's dead to that. You can't like you give it to him. It's not going to bother him no more because he's dead to it. You know, so this is kind of like a kind of I feel kind of Apostle Paul saying. Apostle Paul said, when you're dead to something, you know, you can bring it in front of somebody fifty million times. You can bring a beer in front of somebody. And they're like, we don't want that. They, they, they don't even yeah. crave it. They don't even want it. You know, because they're dead now to it. It don't. It don't. It don't control them no more. It don't control their appetite. It don't control their their need no more. You know, because they have a power greater than that. That that that, that, that that's better than what they have. You got some Tebow. Okay. Yeah. So uh, just building with what yeah. what you were saying, uh-huh. something that might catch your eye, mm-hmm. you can notice it, mm-hmm. but then it doesn't make you it doesn't make you go towards it. Right. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Even even if something uh, catches your attention, mm-hmm. you don't move towards it. Mm-hmm. You notice it, but you it doesn't affect you. No, it don't. It don't. It don't grab you like like it, it would la- like like last time. Yeah, you and, can pass yeah. by it. Yeah, you don't you don't stop and go towards it. You pass on. Right, right. Because before that, if you don't have the power of God, you you couldn't resist it. You you know, it was your addiction. It was like someone being on drugs. You had to have it. But now, yeah, and that's that sin nature mm-hmm. that's inside of you. That mm-hmm. sin nature that mm-hmm. that yeah. said, and that's from Adam and Eve. When we, yes. when Adam and Eve sinned, mm-hmm. that that nature came upon us to want to rebel mm-hmm. against God and want mm-hmm. to do everything that's totally opposite of God. And that's mm-hmm. where Christ says, "Look, that is dead in you." And yeah. when I say dead, it is dormant because 
Mm -hmm. I, I believe Christians still can sin, but that's mm -hmm. where grace. We're going to talk about that later on. You're but right. God, God is telling us, look, that look, you that that part is dead in you. It's still there, mm -hmm. but it's dead. It's dormant. It don't. It, you, it should not control you because right. Christ is living inside of you. Well, this is the thing people don't realize: when Adam and Eve sin. Adam passed down the genes of that to us. Right. Hmm. And so that's why we needed a second Adam that was Christ because the genes he passed on to us, you know, he, it was corruption and his, it was sin. So he, well, well, the, and, and, the second and, Adam had to take his place. And add on to what you said, Romans 5, verses 12. Mm -hmm. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, uh -huh. and so death spread to, to all, all men, men because of all sin. For sin in, indeed was in the world before the law was given, but mm. sin is not counted where right. there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, Moses. even over those sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. Mm. But then if you go ahead and read verse 15, but the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man trespass, much more have grace of God, mm. the free gift and the mm -hmm. free gift by the gift, uh, by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ abided for many. And the free gift is not mm. like the result of that one man's <laughs> sin for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation but the free gift following many trespass brought justification wow yeah. wow so i, I want to continue on that so whenever you're I identified with christ you can be <laughs> identified with his death and identified mm. with his resurrection wow and that is a gift because if we don't have the gift of jesus's resurrection from mm. from the father if we don't have that gift of resurrection from the father then there is no gift so mm -hmm. jesus is the gift that we have right. that uh that allows us to be alive in christ knowing that christ was uh died to sin and was raised to god so can we also die mm -hmm. to sin and be raised with god and we would have never known that if it wasn't for jesus that's right yeah. that's right he conquered over death oh and you have it you want to wait until the next segment let me read something right here. Mike, go ahead, Mike. talking to Mike, boo. <laughs> Let me read something right here. Um, I, I'm looking at a few things here, but man, there's so much. There, uh, there is a lot in these there's scriptures. A lot, there's a lot. There's a lot of meat. Uh, listen to this. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he lived by the power of God. For mm. we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him. By the power of God towards you. Tor towards you. But Where listen is? to this. Watch. I, I want to read this verse because it ties up with it and, and, and it, it, it shows you something. Is that 2 Corinthians? That's 2 Corinthians 13, 4. Okay. But listen to verse 5. It says, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Knowing you not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is is in you except you be reprobate hmm. listen to what it's saying man you got to examine your own life you got to examine your own self you got to look within your heart to see if you are in christ hmm. you know it, you know i said something a while back we walk in the newness of life we walk in christ we walk in jesus if we're not walking in the power of God, if we're not walking in Christ, if we don't have Christ in us, and we're not walking in that spirit, people are not going to see nothing in us. Mm. You know, they're not going to see the fruits of the spirit because we got to bring fruits unto God. When we walk in Christ, we bring the fruits of God forward. Mm. We bring those fruits forward. In other words, you know, it says in the Bible that you're going to bring fruits. God's going to prune that tree and it's going to bring more fruit and more fruit and more fruit. Mm. That is a witness unto those in the world. We become a living Bible. We become something that people read the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we act. The, I mean, everything we do, they watch. Every action, every word you speak, they, they're listening. So you have to be careful when, when you're working in an environment with people. You have to be careful what you say and how you walk. So I want, I want to go add on to what Bowen says, and this is from Tony Evans' Bible commentary, and it's one of these verses that we've been studying. He reads the part. He said, Paul again reminds us that we've been united in, to Jesus. 
Why? Because unity fuels power. We walk in the newness of life, six and four, only when we intimately know that we have been united with Christ. Right. The same power that lead, led to his resurrection right. is available to us, not by working for it, but by ste- uh, steeping ourselves ste- uh, steeping ourselves in our Christian identity, stepping into ourselves in our Christian identity. Hmm. So what, what he's saying right and what made Paul... When you identify in Christ, when you say, I am in Jesus, I am walking in that new life, you're not going to want to sin. That fruit's going to be there. That's right. And that's, that's right. That, you won't that's want right. to say, well, I got grace. I'm going to go ahead and sin when I want. No, because you're in the newness of life. And if you're not in the newness of Christ, if you're not living the life of Christ, you're going to live in sin. I don't oh, care. Oh, absolutely. You, I, agree gonna, you. yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to feed the flesh because mm-hmm. Christ said, crucify the flesh. The Bible says crucify the flesh every day. You got to carry your cross. You got to crucify that flesh every day. And the flesh is not this. The flesh is your own ways. The flesh is your own strength. The mm-hmm. flesh is everything that you think you can do to replace what God, what Jesus did on the cross. You can't do anything within your power to, to, to get your salvation. You have to put it in the cross of Jesus Christ. Because he died. He paid the price for sin. He paid the price for us, for me. I couldn't do what he did. He had to pay that price. Because I, I was useless. I, I would have never, never paid the price. But Jesus, the living God, Jesus, the Savior of the world, the one that I put my hope in, the one that I trust, the one that I love, the one that I hang on to, he gives me hope. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and take a break. We'll be right back after these short uh, few minutes. How you doing, everyone? Isaac here, and I am with Phil Kennedy. He is the artist of the Center of the Door album that I have in my hand right here. And uh, Phil, thank you for coming by and just wanted to ask you a little bit about your album. And does this tell me a little bit of information, which you, uh, how, what led you to make this album? Thank you, brother Isaac. I am a songwriter. Mostly and firstly, I'm a preacher of the gospel. So the Lord has always blessed me, it seems, with a song, with a sermon, with a sermon for the song. And that seems to be how it started when I first started preaching. So, you know, before you know it, you've written way more songs than you have sermons. And I just like to get a little group of them together now and then. It's the songs I've been singing as I travel to Mexico and this place and that and preach, uh, Oklahoma or wherever else the Lord takes me. And, um, I sing those songs, so I put a little CD together. Hey, look, I'm going to be honest. It's a great album. Look, even Thank my you. friend Scott Ford, I, I sent him uh, a digital copy of it, and he loved it. He said he, he loved the album. He loved the way you sing, and uh, it's a Thank real you. big blessing. It's a good blessing for us, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I know that it's available in the digital world. It's available with me physically if you just uh, message me or try to friend me on Evangelist Phil Kennedy uh, Facebook and uh, the other information, I'm sure you can you can give them. Right. Well, we know for sure it's on Apple Music and it's on Spotify, where you can find the Cajun Conservative and Brothers Just Search and go ahead and look it up after you listen to our podcast. Go listen to a little bit of Phil Kennedy's album, Center of the Door. You'll be blessed. I promise you. Welcome back. <laughs> 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 Welcome back to the second segment of the podcast. We we were picking up, we were in picking Romans. <laughs> and uh, just threw me off. It just threw me off. We're good. Are we on there? Or? Didn't mean to cut you off. All but, right. uh, you want me to restart? Or are we good? Now I'll, I'll just restart. No, could have kept it going. Now you're ruined. Yeah, oh. I'm sorry. It just, no, he threw me off. I didn't know what was going on. Oh, come on. Yeah, you, you didn't want that to continue? <laughs> Isaac was That's like, I was Isaac about to, was like, I'm <laughs> lost. I'm lost. <laughs> You're like, let me carry it. <laughs> All right, I'll let you do your thing. I'll, I'll be quet for another couple seconds. <laughs> if you're not watching Brothers Just Searching, may I ask why? They're terrific, you guys. They're just terrific. Here's looking at you, kid. All right, everybody, welcome back to the second segment of Brothers Just Searching. We're going to go ahead and pick up from where we left off, We're talking about the newness of life and how our identity in Jesus Christ. Uh, I think Bowen ended it the best way on the first mm-hmm. segment. So we're going to go Hope. ahead and start with verse number six, where it says, uh, 
knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. If I'm not, mm-hmm. um, the ESV says, no longer will be enslaved to sin. Verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. And that's what we're going to talk about because the newness life, we've been talking about how when we died to Christ, we are we are we are mm. buried with him. Paul mm. says in verse three, we are we are you know, we're baptized into his death. Because we're baptized into his death, we're we're raised or we like as Christ if he raised. And Paul even goes a step further in this passage where he says, We know that our old selves was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For the one who has died has been set free from sin, saying, since we have we our old man, our hmm. old our old person, and I'm gonna try to see if I can find where it said I need to go look. Let me check in Second Corinthians. Old man? Uh where I think it's maybe first Corinthians. Let's go ahead. I know it's five seventeen. Let's check if this is it. First Corinthians five seventeen, if my pen works. Okay, so it's second Corinthians. Ah, let's see. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Yeah. Five, uh, Paul brings it out and says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconcil- uh, reconciliation. So what, what, what Paul's saying right here in Second Corinthians, that because we are saved, that we, we come to the newness of life, we have died to the old self. We are no longer uh, in that trap of sin. And I like how, like I said, I, I studied a lot of um, Brother um, brother uh, Tony Evans' commentary, and I like how he says this in one part of his, uh, his commentary. Uh, let me see where it's at. I just had it. I'm sorry. I'm lost. Okay. Yeah. He says, uh, indeed, it is the same with our bodies of sin. Yes. It's moving around like it's still in charge. Yes. We still is in what will still sin, but previously we had to, because we were slaves to sin. Basically what we were talking mm-hmm. about when you were, when you were, when you was in the world, you couldn't help us sin. Yeah. You, you couldn't, couldn't help. You, you know, couldn't decide, Oh, well, I'm just not gonna. Right. There was no way. But he says, now we are no longer need to be enslaved to sin. If we continue to sin, it's because we've forgotten our true identity saying we're in Christ. And look, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm going to make a point right here. There is some people that live in the world that have stopped doing certain particular sins. Mm-hmm. There's some people that said, look, drinking, I was alcoholic. I stopped drinking. It took me willpower, but I did it. Um, they, there's people that that stop looking at pornography. There's stop, there's mm-hmm. people that have they have stopped, but the thing of it is they did it on their own willpower. Mm-hmm. And I bet you dollars to donuts mm-hmm. that if circumstances got worse, mm-hmm. they probably would go back to that. Why? Because they are a slave to that sin. Mm-hmm. They don't have mm-hmm. nothing to hold on to to say, listen, this is my identity. The reason I don't sin because Christ died, and because Christ died, I died with Him. I crucified this flesh. I am freed from sin because death has died. I have died to sin, but now I'm alive in the Christ, and mm. death has no power over me. It reminds me of that Jeremy mm. Camp song when mm-hmm. that verse says, "Death has no power over me." Mm. And it, it, right. We don't. We don't have to. We not. We're not slaves mm. to sin. People ask me all the time, Isaac, why don't you drink? Isaac, why don't you do this? Isaac. Because I don't want to. Oh, come on. You don't want to have fun? No, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I mm-hmm. died. My, mm-hmm. my, my, my spirit, my old man died, but I was resurrected mm-hmm. in Jesus Christ. I am now saved. I am filled with the spirit. I am dead to sin. I don't want to sin. Now, does temptation mm-hmm. come? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But at mm-hmm. the same time, we don't. it don't have power over us because as verse 7 says, for the one who has died has been set free from sin. Hmm. And if we go to verse 8, I want to hear him read verse 8 where it says, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Christ, knowing that Christ being risen from the dead, death, uh, being risen from the death dead, died. death no more, death has no more dominion over you. 
So because of death, because of Christ's death, and he only died once, I like how ESV says it will never die again. Mm, right. Death no longer has dominion over you. But because of Christ's gift on Calvary's cross, and look, let's, let's point back to that. A lot of people don't catch this. Where is Paul pointing everyone to to have victory over sin? It isn't in reading your Bible more. It isn't being baptized. It isn't being doing 20 Hail Marys. Mm-hmm. It is in Christ. Where is mm-hmm. our identity? Mm-hmm. It is in Christ and the cross where he died at. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. You got to put your faith in the right object, in the right in the right, oh, absolutely. right yeah. place. Mm-hmm. You know, because every time you do that, every time you add or you take away, you know, you, you, you de- you're de-emphasizing the work of Jesus Christ when you're doing that. Yeah, every time you yep. say, well, I can go to an AA. And look, I'm not, I'm not against psychology. I was thinking I think, about I that think there is some mm. things that psychology does well. But at the same time, if you right. tell a person, well, to overcome your drug addiction, mm-hmm. you got to go into rehab. Or to overcome your drug addiction, you have to go to uh, go to AA, uh, uh, alcoholism, go to AA well, meetings. Well, meetings. the grace of God works in that, too. But to a different degree. Right, right. right. Because well, God is gracious to work Well, when you're that, going there, but, you're trying to do it on your own. You're trying to do yeah. it on... But if you put yourself in the identity of Christ and his sacrifice of the cross... Then it's, it's gonna be, just walking out of your identity. Yeah, just walking out of the identity. Look, I'm not a mm-hmm. filthy... Uh, uh, human being no more. I am saved yeah, through you, the blood of Jesus Christ. You don't announce yourself as "Hello, I am the addict." For you yeah, know, no, I you say, I, "Hey, I, hey, am, I am saved. Well, well, I am uh, saved. R- new creation. I am a new creation." Well, well the yeah. thing is, you can't. How can I say this? You cannot put people in something that's man-made and spec it to work. You know, I heard a lot of stories of men or women saying, "I'm going to this thing." Like I had a friend of mine; he actually committed suicide. Or, or he died or he fell off a yeah. porch or something because he yeah. was drunk or something like that. But I remember when he was alive, he came tell me, he says, uh, we work in landscape. And he was like, uh, he was, and he says, uh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to put myself in. I'm drinking too much. I'm putting myself in. I said, dude, you know what you got to do. I told him how he can get delivered and stuff. He said, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. He came back. He got out of the thing. He was doing okay. He worked with us for a good while. He had to go back again. Well, and, and this a, is the third or fourth time. Well, he has it's to, the uh, same thing. Let, let's. I'm gonna use Mike Lindell, the the CEO of My Pillow. Mm-hmm. He wrote a biography, and we have the book here in the studio. Mm-hmm. And he ha- he went. He said that he said, "Look, I went to rehab. Mm-hmm. I went to AA meetings. Mm-hmm. I went to I went to every program in the book, and I I could not get it." Out. He said, "You know when I got delivered from alcohol and drug addiction mm-hmm. is when I said, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin and please take it away. Then the Holy Spirit, and the Holy came Spirit into him. took mm-hmm. it away from him. And he, he made mm-hmm. a program mm-hmm. and he said, it. he said, look, I have no psychiatrist. He said, I have counselors and stuff. He said, but my whole program is not about, oh, we got to fill them with meds or we got to give them a new uh, sense of thinking. Mm-hmm. He says, my program Leads them to the Bible, right? It, that's it leads flesh. them to the world. Mm-hmm. It, it, it leads them to the Spirit to show mm-hmm. them. Listen, mm-hmm. you cannot do this on your own. Sin will have dominion over you. That's right. The right. only way to overcome mm-hmm. sin mm-hmm. is by saying, "Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Die with die with Him in a, in a spiritual sense, and mm-hmm. be ro- rise again. Have that newness of life. Be re." Uh, Re, re, uh, be a new image in Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the only way because sin will, will you will have sin that it will dem, it will control you. Right? How right. to say sin will take you further than you want to go right. and stay long, longer than it, I, I, sin will take you further than you want to go and keep you longer than you, you want to yeah, stay exactly. and charge more than you want to pay. Yeah, and, but, but but Christ Christ says, look, I can't pay the charges. But you see, but all that is man <laughs> structure. That's all man. That's man saying I can do it. You know, I you know I can make this possible, and and you yeah, know, it's you, the it's the uh, right. the original lie of saying I can be like God, right? I right. can take away this sin from right, you. right. I can do this. I can change this yeah. person, or I can do oh, this. I can change my life whenever I want to. Yeah, right. It is like I heard a minister say this. He said, "Why mm. God takes so long to to deliver, to help some people?" Well, he's right. He says sometimes it's us. It's our pride. A lot of times, see God. God can deliver us right away. Some people he does, 
But some people, it just takes a little while because yeah. they're trying to do it themselves. A lot of us are stubborn and we mm -hmm. say, okay, well, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. no, I'm going to keep on trying. I'm going to keep on trying. I got, Knowing I, that you <laughs> fell on, flat on your face tw if, 20 dozen times. A fail, I'll go to B or C yeah. next. And, and I'll then, go to God after when nothing else works. Well, and, and then, <laughs> then we, well, yeah. you have anything before we move on? or Oh, uh -huh, yeah. Because God, you got everything out a while ago? <laughs> <laughs> he let it all flow. I'm just listening. Oh, because yeah. I, I really want to go because after this, it said for the death has no longer dominion over you when we go into verse 10 it says for in that he died he died unto sin once mm. and, and and like i said i'm jumping from esv to king james because i think the esv brings it out a little bit little, a little emphasizes it a little bit it says for the death he died he died to sin once for all so basically saying listen what christ did at the cross that's enough Mm -hmm. You don't have to say mm -hmm. sacraments. You don't have mm -hmm. to do no Hail Marys. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to Joseph Smith. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to Buddha. You don't, have, no, you don't have to go to any any other work base. Mm -hmm. Look, and I'm going to use, for example, like we had Brother Eli yeah. Yoder here the yeah. other day. Yeah. Remember, you had to go to the bishop and mm -hmm. you had to go to the church. Mm -hmm. No, you don't have to do that. You had, he died once. Mm -hmm. You go to him for salvation. And guess what? You can go back to him. Great. That's where he says where sin abound, grace did more abound. Right, right. Because we we were we, we worship Christ and he only died once. I think mm -hmm. man, we need to mm. we need to go ahead and to, to, to emphasize on that. Yeah. It's not twenty times then you're forgiven. It's mm -hmm. once and for all. We're not preaching eternal security. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not doing that because you can lose your salvation. We believe that according to scriptures. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, as a mm -hmm. believer of Christ, you don't have to do nothing else. And that bothers me when I hear Christians say, there is more to salvation than just the cross. Really? Mm -hmm. You're not reading the same Romans chapter I'm reading right here. Because it said it's once and for all. And that, yeah. that, 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 that puts a thorn under my flesh when I hear preachers say that. And, and yeah. And before, you know, a lot of people say, oh, Brother Isaac, you're just making that up. And people don't really talk like that. I sure heard an apostolic preacher. I heard about that, this minister say it. Yeah, and I heard an apostolic preacher that asked you to me and that or that he said i don't think the cross is enough so to say that but, and, and people see, don't believe that how, yes they how, do how can people say so, that yeah how can people say that because look paul is clear mm -hmm. paul's clear mm -hmm. in verse 10 for the death he died he died to sin once for all and then you can read the rest of the scripture for the mm -hmm. life he lives mm -hmm. he lives to god so you also may consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to god mm -hmm. in christ jesus so if christ if, if paul says it's once and for all jesus said it is finished at the cross i'm sorry everybody mm -hmm. that believes that there's more to the cross there's more to salvation than the cross you're wrong mm -hmm. it's only god's way that was it's all, only god's it, way. it was always attended from the old testament yeah, I mean, till yeah. ever yeah. ever since ever since Adam, we've been trying to say, "Oh, well, I can do better next mm -hmm, time." Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we can never do better next time. Well, well, well they, yeah. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. not tr I'm not trying to say there's not progress, but to say that we yeah. can uh, die completely unto sin mm -hmm. in ourselves. Yeah, you, you to possible. say to say, okay, today I am completely dead unto sin and completely mm -hmm. alive unto God. Mm -hmm. Well, and then, yeah. and then, in that sense, mm -hmm. never sin again, and always live. Well, well, when you in, do it, it's ba it works based. God. It's works based. When you say, "Look, I can add to the cross," well, or I well, can take even away. If, yeah. Even if you say that it's work based, mm -hmm. it's not complete. That's right. It's, and it's not. not gonna it's help not you. holy because it's mm -hmm. not. Because you're, try, you're trying right, to add right. on to salvation. Right, right. You're trying to say, well, look, Christ, mm -hmm. you did the biggest part, but now I got to do small things to stay in you that salvation. You did your part, and I got to do and the that's rest. Not, and, and look, we're talking about mm. sin and the dead to sin, living unto God. This is why people struggle with sin. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be completely honest with you. And that's why I get from this. People are not putting their full trust in Christ. They're mm -hmm. not putting their identity in Christ. They're not believing that the cross is enough. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, I have to do this. I have to do that. And guess what? Well, it, they, they, you have all these Christians. Well, oh, I followed. I, I, I went ahead and drunk some alcohol. Or I went ahead and did this certain sin. Yeah, because you're not putting your faith and your total trust in mm. the finished work on Calvary's cross. That's yeah. right. That's and that's basically how it is. And this is how you overcome sin, by putting your total faith in what Christ did at the cross. And mm. you allow the Holy Spirit, that opens the door for the Holy Spirit to work yes, in, in absolutely. your life when you go to the cross. Mm. Right. Well, this is why Paul said in verse 12, let not 
let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies to make you obey its passions. Do not present your body members of uh, to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those who have been bought from death to life as your members to God as instruments for righteousness for sin will not have dominion over you since you are not under the law but under grace mm-hmm. this is what he's saying right here he's telling people listen boogie on your point how you let the holy spirit come in well you, you don't accept you don't, the cross you gotta accept the cross but you can't you can't well i accept jesus now i'm gonna go ahead and sin all i want no no you have to be a light this is what paul's saying mm-hmm. since now you understand that you are alive in christ you're mm-hmm. dead to sin mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. do not let your bodies your mortal bodies right. obey the passions because look the devil's gonna come and tempt you yeah well i'm not i'm not yeah. gonna sit here and say the devil's right. gonna say hold oh, Doggone it! He came across. I, lost. Cross. I yeah. lost. I'm going home. No. Demons, pack your bags. No, no. no. He's gonna. He, he's gonna, gonna fight you more. He, he, I don't know why I'm, this image is coming up to me because uh. I watched the Looney Tunes today. <laughs> it reminds me of Sam and Sam. Uh, yeah. Bugs Bunny was in a fort. Yeah. And Sam and Sam uh-huh. was doing everything he could to get into that fort, uh-huh. and he would bring the biggest, baddest guns, but always Bugs Bunny would come out on top because uh-huh. the uh-huh. devil does that. If you have Christ, uh-huh. you're protected, and uh-huh. the devil's gonna bring the biggest guns to you. Well, well you're a bigger threat to his kingdom, right? He's not going after a lost person. He got them, you know. So he, he's mm-hmm. you, you a threat, you know. He's going after you because you got the real thing, you know. And this is what these last scriptures are basically saying: they say, look, don't let sin reign in your bodies. And boogie, how does that work out? Because this is th- you think about this. He is talking about sanctification right here as well. Yes, yes. And, and, and a lot of people wonder about mm-hmm. how do you how do you become how do you yeah. start the process of sanctification? Well, first of all, putting your faith and trust in Christ, you're That's justified. Right. That's right. And the sanctification process is coming to where the Spirit of God is dwelling in you. And helping you to live a Christian And look, life. I'm going to be honest with mm-hmm. you. The, the, the Spirit of God will not dwell in you if you mm-hmm. have filth in it. Right, right. If right, you if you right. have sin in it and you, you're you you're using your bodies or you're letting the sin reign in your moral bodies, well, the Spirit of God ain't going to dwell in you. That's right. It, it, it's like if you're going in the house and there's a, there's a junky house. I heard uh, Pastor Mike or one of those preachers say that one time. He said, like, you know, God wants to live in you. It's like living in a, someone's house that's all junky and garbage you ain't gonna want to live in there you're gonna feel uncomfortable so it's the same thing with the sanctification process god wants to come and live in a place where he's comfortable you know where the house is clean you know what i'm saying so he wants you to be clean you have you to know? you have to yield your body unto god exactly you can't, mm-hmm. and see that's what a lot of people say well what well, you know mm-hmm. and i hear that statement god will take you the way you are that that, that statement is halfway true yeah. He will take you the way you are. He will take any sinner the way they are. There is, but they, they are. will change. But you have to change, and that's where it comes to the point where you know law, uh, works and and the works and um, does work save your works? Don't save you. And I think Paul brings it up right here. Look, you you make your identity in Christ. You yield to Christ, and so you're not going to sin. Your works are going to change. You're not going to stay yeah. the same. Well, you're going to well, start doing things. Well, and I think didn't you mention that earlier that when you come to Jesus. Your your attitude. I think it was during the break, or it was it was. I think it was through prep, where you said that that when you get saved, your life will change. Anybody gets saved, their life will change. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you don't change, if there's no change, then there's a problem. There, there's no salvation. But you know, y'all y'all talking about about grace and all this, and, and the Spirit of God brought something to my attention. Mm. Listen to our, listen to this, okay? When you put your trust in Christ and what he did at Calvary's cross, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. people take something and they want to add it to what Christ did on the cross. They want to add something to it. When you do that, you're putting you're you're making a law unto yourself. That is a good point, Bo. You're that is making a, good point. a law. Mm-hmm. You're saying, okay, okay, let, let, let me give you an example, okay? I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm spirit filled. Mm-hmm. I, I believe in Christ. I believe in what he did on the cross. But let's say I say this. Well, you know, Christ didn't really do enough for me. I think I'm going to read more of my Bible. Or, mm. or, or I, I'm going to pray more. You know, I'm going to read 10 chapters in the Bible, and I'm going to spend two hours in prayers. You are making a law mm. unto yourself. Mm. Or like you're getting not, to church you're, 30 you're minutes not, early every you're time. Not, you're not trusting in the cross of Christ. That's right. And anybody that does that is living by law. 
And okay. don't give it no. We should read our Bible. Oh, yeah, I was we about should, to say that. We yeah, should that's what I'm saying. No, 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 no I'm, I'm clarifying because but like, there, if, there if, is Christians that say that, oh, you're saying not to read, not to pray. No, we're not no, saying that at no, all. This don't we make do, it your we salvation. We do it to draw closer to God, not mm-hmm. to earn our salvation. That is a big difference, right? Yeah, now. it's like uh, setting a, a time that you have to be at church, and if you don't get to that time, you fail. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you look, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna give you an example of that. I remember when I was growing up. And I, t- I asked the Lord, Lord, help me to witness to one person a day. And I did it for a while. I was like, man, I'm witness to one person a day. And one day I missed. Well, I thought I was going to hell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, was, was it bad for me to ask that of the Lord? No, no. But at a point, I came to say, well, no, I have to do this to earn my salvation. And it's not about that. I should not have been wondering, mm-hmm. wanting to witness to Hey, Lord, check that off my box for the day. Yeah. I should have done and it. You didn't Lord, realize it, no, but it realize. Realize. You know yeah. what? Mm-hmm. I'm going to share something with you. You just said something about church. Mm-hmm. A lot of Christians go to church thinking church is going to save them. No, nope. you understand? Mm-hmm. They make that a law too. You can go to church and make it a law. You can walk you, through the you doors. You can walk through the doors, mm-hmm. and you can say, "Well, I'm at church. I'm all right with God." Mm-hmm. No, you're not all right with mm-hmm. God. It's mm-hmm. not. It's not right. There's a lot of people sitting in churches today, or just as religious as can be. They just like the Catholics. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's the same thing. Just like the Hobo Witness, mm-hmm. they make this thing a law. You cannot make anything a law when it comes to Christ and him crucified at Calvary's cross. You can't do that. You have to put your trust and your heart into what he did at Calvary's well, cross. That's, that's why in verse 14 it says, For sin will not have dominion over it since you are not under the law, but under grace. Because we're under grace, we, we shouldn't substitute the sin for law to say, well, we got to read our Bible and pray and put ourselves under submission. That way we should do it because we want to draw the draw to Christ. Mm. But that's why sin don't have dominion over us because we're not under the law. We know what sin is, mm. but because we are law. saved and we fill with the Holy Ghost, we're under grace. We're saved under grace and we don't want to sin no more. The law. Mm-hmm. Brought us and showed us what sin was. It actually brought you to the cross. It brought you to yeah, the cross. It brought, yeah, you know? it, it showed us but that when we you could accept- not, we could not do anything without to, Jesus. without Jesus without Christ. Without Christ, you know, when when we came to Christ, mm-hmm. that was it. The law cannot save you. There's nothing you can do that'll save you. You have to trust in the cross of Christ. You can't do anything. You know, you can't account. do nothing to earn your salvation. That's I've right. learned that. I, I've come to accept that. The more I study the Word of God, the more I read the Bible, the more I read things, the more I come to see where my salvation's at. It's not in myself. It's not in what I do. It, it's not in me reading my Bible. It's not in me praying. It's not. It's what Jesus Christ did at Calvary's cross, and, and I put think, my trust and in I that. And I think this first, mm-hmm. this first section. That, and this first episode was a great episode, by the way. Mm-hmm. This first episode, we I think we've proven that with the scriptures. That listen, sin is real. Oh, we cannot, definitely. We, do, we, can, we we cannot abide in sin because grace abounds. Paul made that clear at the beginning. Look, God forbid, certainly not. Whatever translation you're reading. And then Paul basically said this: the reason you don't want to sin is because you look to Jesus Christ. That is your identity. Mm-hmm. And when the enemy comes, you don't do it on your own. Mm-hmm. You go ahead and you yield to the Father, and mm-hmm. He helps you. And that's why sin don't right. abound in you. It's not because and you are saying I'm going to be holy and righteous. The reason you're holy and you're righteous is because of what Christ did at the cross. cross mm-hmm. right. If you if you didn't have Christ and, in your heart, you would not you be know, holy and righteous. And the thing about it is, you know, because I trust in Christ and what He did at Calvary's cross, does not mean that I'm not going to fail. You know, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna sin. I'm gonna do things I'm not supposed to do. I'm gonna. But at least I know who I can come to for forgiveness. And, and see, and, and on a final note with this, too, because a lot of people say, well, what if I'm living in sin? Or th- basically, that, that is right there. You're going to sin. You but will. But it's saying you're not going to continue You're in not going to practice sin. You're not going to practice sin. You're not going to be, as we heard, it was a long time ago, uh, uh, one of the fellows we knew went to mm. one of our pastors and they said they said hey we're going to this certain certain festival and our pastor said hey that ain't right I don't think you should go that oh that's okay I'm going to ask for forgiveness later yeah you mm. see no, that's, that, the thing. that's that's not that's not how that works that's not how not, that works you're not going to wake up saying how can I sin today you're going to say lord how can I please you and if you make a mistake and sin then you have an advocate with the father that's as right. john that's said right. mm-hmm. there you go. and that's where grace comes in yeah, right there mm-hmm. that's right with that being said, that's going to end our mm-hmm. episode for tonight. Praise uh, we, Jesus. Slaves we to started, Righteousness. Yes, next. Slaves to Righteousness. We, uh, we covered the half, uh, first half of Romans chapter 6. Um, you know, as we said, it's alive to uh, dead to sin and alive to Christ right. Jesus. That's right. Um, well, we, 
I hope all the rest of them are as good as this. <laughs> but it's good, man. It's good. So I hope this encouraged everyone that is listening. Uh, just a friendly reminder, please hit the subscribe or the follow button that you are listening on. And if you want to be a sponsor, go ahead. Hey, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Hey, sponsors, by sharing it with your friends. Let's go like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, on, on this note as well, we are on another platform. We don't have. We're not caught up yet on the episodes, but we are on Rumble. So if you are on YouTube new. or if you want to listen to, if you're on a uh, platform and uh, you you go ahead, you don't or you tell somebody don't listen to us on listen to podcasts or watch YouTube. Hey, go check them out on Rumble. Yeah, I know right. somebody. My my dad will definitely be on Rumble. Oh, good. Yeah, good. Love, and, and that that's politically. There's some people that don't like you know YouTube and stuff. But we are we are across all the platforms. I I felt when we because we hesitated on Rumble a little bit, but Rumble's starting to grow. And I think we should grow with them as well. Yeah. I noticed on Rumble, and that, that's what really sealed the deal for Rumble. You go on YouTube and you see a lot of Christian content on YouTube. But you don't hardly see that on, on Rumble. Rumble. You see a lot of political stuff. Yeah. And you got the world going in there like UFC. Yeah. You have gamers starting right. to go in there. Yeah. And they're blowing up. And I started thinking, there's no one sharing, sharing the gospel, gospel on Rumble. On Rumble. Mm. So yeah. I, I, I felt that we needed to go on there. We need to spread the gospel because it's just not about on YouTube. It's just not about on the Get anchor platform. Mm -hmm. It is about sharing the gospel all over. And we should use every advocate we have. Yes, yeah, every right. platform. That's right. Yeah. So, but all with of, that, we, we want to reach all our audience. We yeah, want to reach world. every I level. Reach. I want to pre reach the world. That, that you yeah, know, and we could do that through all these apps. Yes, yeah, and you know, we, you know, I mentioned family conference and Bowen did, huh? Like, I was, but it goes to a point though. You know, we are heard all over the world. Mm -hmm. If you we look are. at our, yeah, we we we're heard mm -hmm. in a number of nations. Mm -hmm. We're heard across all America. Mm -hmm. God is doing something here. Mm -hmm. Please continue to help us. Let us grow. If you feel the need to to want to help us out any other way, you can always email us at brothers just searching podcast at gmail dot com, and we'll get back with you. and right. We can let you know how to do all that. You know, but the Lord, the Lord's doing great things here. I, I, you know what? And you now I don't want to say that on the air, but I think uh, we need to do another interview. You know, what I'm talking about bring somebody on like. A oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we uh, we already we already have plans. Um, brother Eli, we have to get with him. But remember, he wanted to be part of this series. Yeah, so that's we right. didn't have to. We have to and, get with uh, him to come next. To, and then next. The, and the guy for Good Fight Ministries, we need. Yeah. Oh, you know, I have somebody, probably Jonathan. That'd be cool. He's with Church Without Walls International. But we we have to we have to figure some stuff out. Oh yeah. yeah. But uh, but anyway, but you know, I think I think God's doing great and marvelous things here. Uh, and also on our other podcast, uh, the Cajun Conservative, God's doing great mm. things. Because you remember, guys, I told you, all God told us we have to tell the truth and expose the lies. Okay. And that, that's what that's our job right here. So, all right. But with, but with that being said, I want to thank Anthony Bowen and Aubrey. Uh, thank y'all for being yeah. here. Always, always yeah, a bro. pleasure being with y'all guys every week. It's good to be here. Uh, when one of us are gone, it feels like the quarterback left the team. So. Right, right, right. <laughs> but but well, you heard about that? Uh, Aaron Rodgers went to the Jets today. Uh -uh. Yep, they traded him. Oh. Yep. The Jets, the Jets had to give a lot, but they they got him. So. Oh my goodness. But hey, the draft, the, the NFL draft at this time is going to be passed. But the NFL draft is Thursday, so <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so I, but God is doing God's doing great and marvelous things, guys. God's mm. doing great and marvelous things. So with that yeah. being said, I want to thank y'all for listening to Brothers Just Searching. As always, again, thank you for y'all continued support by listening to us, sponsoring mm. us through shares and likes. Uh, and guys, remember Jesus Christ is coming back and he's coming back soon. So don't be fair of heart because Jesus has overcome the world. If you want to know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, reach out to us. We'll tell you how to make Jesus your Savior in heaven, your home. Until next time, be blessed, be encouraged. Remember Romans 6, 15 to 23 next week. Y'all have a good one.